Beyond Friat's Laws. Now let's explore alternative theories in spinal biomechanics. Now we've explored and looked at Friat's Laws and we have questioned their relevance in today's clinical practice. Now let's take a step even further. What if Friat's Laws don't fully capture the complexity of spinal mechanics? What are some of the alternative theories that provide a more nuanced and comprehensive understanding of how the spine functions. Specifically, we'll look at Punjabi's theory of spinal stability and McGill's model of spinal mechanics, two approaches that address the limitations of Friat's laws and offer a fresh or new perspective on spinal care. So first, let's talk about Punjabi's theory of spinal stability. Now, unlike Friat's laws, which mainly focus on the relationship between side bending and rotation, Punjabi's model emphasizes the importance of spinal stability. Now, according to Punjabi, spinal stability is governed by three interdependent subsystems. The passive subsystem, which includes the spinal column itself, the active subsystem, which includes and involves the musculature, and the neural subsystem, which is all about the nervous system control. Now, these subsystems work together to maintain stability and prevent injury during movement. Punjabi's model is particularly insightful because it considers how the spine adapts to dysfunction or injury. So, for example, if one subsystem, like the muscles, is compromised, the other subsystems will try to compensate to maintain overall stability. This concept is crucial in understanding the root causes of spinal pain and dysfunction, providing a more comprehensive approach to treatment. Now, in clinical practice, Punjabi's model guides therapists to assess not just the movement of individual spinal segments, but also the overall stability of the spine. This means that treatment isn't just about correcting a specific movement pattern or enhancing muscular control and neurocoordination to maintain spinal health and prevent injury. Now, let's move on to Dr. Stuart McGill's model of spinal mechanics. Now, McGill's work is widely recognized for its focus on spinal stability and injury prevention, particularly through the role of core musculature. Now, this model challenges the notion that the spine can be understood in isolation, as Friat's law might suggest. But instead, McGill emphasizes that spinal health is heavily dependent on the strength and the coordination of the core muscles and the entire kinetic chain. McGill goes beyond the static posture or postures emphasized in Friat's laws, instead rooting its approach in the analysis of functional movement patterns. For example, lifting, bending, squatting, walking. Now this is crucial because Spinal mechanics must be understood within the context of dynamic activities where the interplay between the spine and surrounding muscles is critical. By focusing on core stability, McGill's model addresses the root causes of many spinal dysfunctions that may be overlooked if we solely only rely on Friar's segmental approach. In practice, McGill's model is particularly valuable for addressing and rehabilitating patients with chronic lower back conditions. For instance, therapists might focus on exercises that enhance 
core strength as part of the rehab, planks and bird dogs to improve spinal, spinal stability and reduce the risk of injury. Now, this approach is especially beneficial for athletes where the demands on the spine are greater and traditional models like Friat's law may just not be sufficient. So, how do we integrate these alternative theories into clinical practice? Now, while Friat's law provides a foundational understanding of spinal mechanics, incorporating elements from both Punjabi and McGill's models allow for a more holistic and individualized approach to patient care. For example, comprehensive assessments that include Punjabi's and McGill's insights enable practitioners to evaluate just, you know, not just the movement of spinal segments, but also the stability and functional capacity of the entire system. Now, this leads to a more accurate diagnosis and targeted interventions that address the root causes of dysfunction rather than just treating the symptoms. Moreover, these models emphasize the importance of personalized treatment plans. So, by considering factors like muscular strength, flexibility, and the specific demands placed on the spine by different activities, we can move beyond the generic applications of Friat's law. This personalized approach is key to improving patient outcomes and ensuring effective long-term spinal health. Now, while Friat's law or Friat's laws have their place in history of spinal care, modern biomechanics demands a more sophisticated understanding of how the spine functions in real world scenarios. By integrating Punjabi's theory of spinal stability and McGill's model of spinal mechanics into our practice, we can move beyond the limitations of Friat's laws and adopt a more holistic, evidence-based approach to spinal care.